So in some sad news, and as a form of transparency, because I have to report on the good, the bad, the ugly, and everything else in between, I was a fan of Black Adam, okay? I liked Black Adam, and I liked what it was trying to do with the movie, okay? It was very simplistic. The story was very easy to follow. It's definitely not going to shock you or anything like that or plot twist you or whatever. It was a simple popcorn flick, and I think it was a good return to form in return in, in regards to like superhero movies that they could eventually build upon and make something interesting out of throughout their DCEU as they try to revamp it. But with that being said... Unfortunately, it seems like Black Adam is going to bomb at the box office due to the latest numbers that have been released. So let's get into the article, guys, from Bounding Into Comics. But of course, before we do, as I said in my last video, I am promoting my YouTube channel now for the remainder until we hit 10,000 subscribers, guys. We are so, so close to doing so. It has been a goal of mine since I've started this whole fucking crazy uh, trip that I've been on. Guys, very easy if you can just take the time. I know a lot of you watch me that don't subscribe. Over 40, 50% of you don't subscribe. I get a lot of returning viewers that aren't subscribed. Consider hitting that subscribe button. Help me reach that 10,000 goal. I would greatly appreciate it. I try not to ask too much of you guys. I try not to spam you with anything other than the Twitch lately and now YouTube. I just have a couple goals that I'm trying to reach before the end of the year. And this will mean a lot to me if you can help me get there. Now, with that being said, let's get into this article. It says, despite a Henry Cavill cameo as Superman, Black Adam does indeed bomb at the box office, which is a shame. It's a shame. It really is. I, I was hoping that more people were going to go out to support the movie. I really was. But unfortunately, it does look like the negative press that the movie got from the hardcore critics that are just completely hating on this movie because it features a strong masculine character that had no wokeness. It's unfortunate, but it is true. Like They, uh, they did manage to at least stall the sales a little bit. Uh, but I think it did better than they initially thought it was going to do. But let's get further into it and see exactly how bad it may be. So it says Black Adam might have brought Henry Cavill back as Superman, but his cameo was not enough to keep the Dwayne Johnson-led film from bombing at the box office. It says the film has only grossed $319.4 million at the worldwide box office after three weeks. It's only made $137 million domestically and $182 million at the international box office. It earned $67 million domestically in its opening weekend. However, according to the numbers, the film had a production budget of $200 million. That means the film has only earned 1.6 times its production budget so far. Films typically have to earn at least 2 to 2.5 times their production budget to break even. It says Black Adam did exceed predictions for its opening weekend take. Box Office Pro predicted the film would earn $63 million domestically. And as noted, it brought in $67 million. So that's good that there was a lot of turnout for this movie. And to be honest with you... I don't I don't really I think the word bomb is probably really strong here, but it did fail. OK, let's be honest. It did fail to get all of its money back. All right, because the budget, you have to take the budget and times it by two for marketing and all this other nonsense that's involved, especially when you have something along the lines of this, where you feature a prominent character like The Rock, you know, the I should say a prominent person like The Rock. Uh, he does a lot of marketing, obviously. So it is something that uh, it definitely would have taken at least 400 plus million to break even. And it doesn't look like even with more time that it's going to get there, unfortunately, even uh, even across the sea. So it says as far as what the film would make domestically for its entire run at the box office, Box Office Pro predicted anywhere from 135 to 175 million. It has already surpassed the lower figure. It's unclear how much higher it will go, given its face still it will face stiff competition with Black Panther Wakanda Forever this upcoming weekend, which is true. Black Panther coming out soon in a few days, and it, it, it definitely is going to bury uh, Black Adam without a doubt. It says, while the film appears to be hitting expectations, or maybe even slightly exceeding them, those expectations don't actually make the film profitable. In fact, as noted above, the expectations are below what the film needs to actually break even, depending on whether it needs to make at least 2 or 2.5 times its production budget. Black Adam is also at the bottom of the list compared to other DCEU films. The only films that is currently beating at the domestic box office is Birds of Prey, The Suicide Squad, and Wonder Woman 1984. It will more than likely surpass Shazam as it's only $3 million behind that film, which grossed a total of $140 million. However, it has a long way to go to catch Justice League, which grossed $229 million. On the global side, it looks similar to the domestic grosses. However, instead of only being $3 million behind Shazam, it's 44 million behind. Ouch. Wow. Wow. That's a big difference. Now, like I said, 
we don't really know. It's kind of like an assumption, right? So it is a known, It's I don't want to say it's a known fact, but it's a known thing that you need two to 2.5 times the budget of the movie to actually break even before you start making a pure profit off of the movie itself. So when you take those numbers into account, then yes, of course, Black Adam looks like it's going to be, unfortunately, a failure as much as I wish it wasn't. It is going to be a failure, and we have to recognize that uh, as fans. But I do think that if it was given more time and Black Panther Wakanda Forever was not coming out, I think it probably could have hit the break-even point. But unfortunately, with Black Panther coming out, I think it will bury that film. I really do. It says YouTuber OMB Reviews predicts the film will be a massive financial flop if it does not get into the Chinese market. He went on to explain by comparing the film to Marvel Studios Eternals, it seems more and more that Eternals is likely going to be the bare minimum that this film makes around $400 million. Bolstering her, uh, his point, he compared Black Adam and Eternals' total gross following their third Sunday. Eternals, though, was around $136 million, so this film is very much tracking domestically in a very similar way. Black Adam is still performing just a little bit better, but if this film continues to be somewhat similar to Eternals domestically and is almost exactly similar, if maybe just a hair better internationally, we're looking at a film that is not going to get to that $500 million mark. As for why this film isn't raking in the cash, the film and its marketing made it clear it was embracing wokeness through its casting. The film features blatant woke casting including a race-swapped Hawkman played by Aldous Hodge and a race-swapped Cyclone played by Contessa Swindle. Now, I don't know if I necessarily agree with this, okay? I don't know if I necessarily agree with this. Now, here's why. So, I understand Hawkman has been race-swapped. But you can kind of explain that in his background, okay? You can kind of bullshit your way out of that one. Now, in terms of race swapping Cyclone, I don't think you can necessarily bullshit your way out of that one. That was a blatant race swap. Now, as much as I hate race swapping, one of the things I mentioned regarding Black Adam was the fact that they did not market their wokeness at all. They did not do so. Marvel would have ran full steam ahead with this shit saying, oh, we featuring the first black Hawkman on screen. Oh, we're featuring the first black female strong independent woman Cyclone on screen. We have the first this, first that. Look at all the titles we have. They would have ran with it. You get what I'm saying? They would have ran with it. But DC didn't do so. So even though DC had uh, check boxes that they obviously checked for this movie, I don't think the marketing part, which is what they said here in the article of Abounding Into Comics, I don't think the marketing part was necessarily woke at all. I just think that it was a fact of, okay, we recognize they race swapped it, but they never talked about it. Like, nobody ever talked about it. Nobody ever even cared. You know what I mean? So I, I think that it definitely, uh, I don't know if I agree with this particular statement from Bounding Into Comics about the way they marketed the film. I think they marketed it very well. I think they marketed it based off the, uh, the the people they actually thought was going to see the movie. I think they did very well with that. It says, Swindle also claims to be a non-binary trans actor, despite that being an impossibility as humans are born either male. <laughs> okay, all right. So now we get into the politics. Okay, I understand. Listen, Bounding, I agree with you with the whole pronoun thing. I understand. But sometimes you, your guys' articles are very extreme to the obvious one side. And you got to keep it a little bit in the middle here so people take you a little more seriously and you can kind of reach out to different people. In my opinion... All right, I'm just I'm just calling it out because like a lot of people realize that I read a lot of bounding into comics, but that doesn't necessarily mean I agree with everything they say. Now I agree with the with the message here. I agree with the pronoun nonsense and all that shit, but that doesn't mean it has to be in a article about the comic book characters. You get what I mean? Like that that's all I'm saying. But I, I get that they're trying to say that it was marketed for wokeness and they're trying to bring that up for that. So I understand, but I just don't agree with that. It says, some might argue that audiences are fading on comic book films, but four of the top 10 grossing films of 2022 are comic book movies, including Doctor Strange, uh, The Batman, Thor Love and Thunder, and Spider-Man No Way Home. While it's unlikely that audiences are tuning out of comic book films, another possibility is the confusion surrounding the DCEU amid the Warner Bros. Discovery merger and David Zaslav's new regime. That I agree with. All right, I've said multiple times that DC is so messy. DC is so messy with the way they present their timeline and continuity, that it's very difficult for the quote-unquote normies to follow uh, compared to Marvel. It's just true. Like, it's so much easier. It's so much easier to follow the Marvel phase setup and all that nonsense that they do. It is unbelievably easier. But when it comes to DC, if you didn't know about the story, you would have no idea where it takes, what takes where, you know what I mean? There's no way to follow it. So they need to start coming out with roadmaps, they need to start coming out with stuff that's going to allow people to understand 
where everything is in the timeline of their DCEU. And I think that's going to help people get excited for the next project. And I think it's going to help people understand better where they are so that when the next project comes out, they get more and more hyped about it. You get what I'm saying? So anyway, guys, that's going to do it for today's video. I hope you did enjoy it. If you did, consider hitting that subscribe button. I would greatly appreciate it. Don't forget to like the video, comment, let me know what you think of today's story, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Hypnotic out.